in there somewhere. I think it's about there. And just down to the right. Other right. Yeah, it's somewhere there. Um, I don't know if you can see. It's just to the. It's just to the edge. It's about over there where my finger is. A little bit more to the right. Go up a bit. Hmm. He's there. I can see him. Can you not see him with your eyes? Just sitting over there. He's got a very long black tail. It is a magpie shrike. It's what I am trying to show you. I don't know. Maybe there. I'm, it's so hard to see with a glare on the monitor. But he's just off this animal pathway that goes into the bush, up and to the left, where you start to get those trees on the left-hand side. I can hear a bat. Leader. There we go. Up a little bit. I can see his tail. There we go. Top right corner of your screen. Go a little bit right, 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 hard right. There we go. There he is. That is the magpie shrike that I was trying to show you. Phew. That was getting into <laughs> <laughs> and looking very very carefully for some insects but sitting patiently so that's how these birds hunt so some birds like that battalier that I could hear calling it sounds a bit like a, a rooster in the sky making a strange noise is looking for its food from the skies it soars about whereas the magpie shrikes like most of the shrike species prefer to perch themselves up on a branch on the top of a shrub and wait for some movement down below and then they'll swoop down capture their insects and then eat them sometimes they even impale them on thorns the fiscal shrike is a very good example of a bird that does that quite well the magpie shrikes don't i don't think create those beautiful buffets of uh, insects just as well as the fiscal shrikes do but that very very sharp beak and the black and white plumage that is typical with the with the, uh, the shrikes isn't that beautiful now i don't know where the others are because they normally are quite uh, gregarious you'll see them in, in family groups it just seems to be that one maybe the others have all just decided to scatter out and not feed on top of each other or the other thing is oh no there's one up top actually it's quite an interesting one this one's got a lot of white on it he's just sitting there we go. Let's have a look at him. Look how unusual this is. Video jumper, you said that they are beautiful birds. They are indeed. Look how cool the pattern is on this one. This has got the most white I've ever seen on a magpie shrike before. I think it's quite interesting, don't you? Beautiful patterning. Lovely. And it's amazing the different um, types of colorations that you can see on birds. Not quite leucistic though, in case you are wondering. Um, otherwise it would have... Uh, it would be completely white almost. This is, I don't think, enough to make it leucistic. But beautiful nonetheless. Looking very carefully. So I think that these are the adults. A couple of weeks ago, actually a few months ago, we were seeing them in massive groups. And I suppose the youngsters have obviously completely left the groups, uh, their parents. They don't need them anymore. Because that's what happens with the magpie shrikes. Is that why you can see so many of them? Is it's mom and dad and from their sort of first... The first the set of chicks from the year before help feed the new ones. Let's see, what have you found? See, it's flown down to a lower branch, so it must be getting ready. It must have seen some movement in the grass. Careful, you don't fall over. Look how it's using its tail to help balance it, though. Isn't that incredible? We've been talking a lot about how important tails are to the various animals, not just, well, to mammals, but also to birds, of course, for balance. What have you got? Did you get something? Was it worth diving headfirst into the grass? Looks like it. Maybe a little grasshopper or something? It's pecking away over there. Must be quite a, quite a big insect then. Come on, bring your meal out so we can see it, please. Didn't seem to let the thorns and all sorts of things bother it at all. There we go, it is a grasshopper. How great is that? Let's see, come and land in the open for us. Yes, it is too. Just landed up into the top. There we go. Look at that. What you got? There we go. There's the grasshopper. That's a tasty treat, and I can see why it was struggling slightly. Can't you? It's quite a big meal for this bird, and I'm quite interested to see what it's going to do, because it, I don't think it's going to be able to eat that whole. It's not going to be able to open its mouth wide enough. So are you going to pull it apart? 
looks like it. Oh, wow, look at that. It actually sort of pecked right behind uh, the back of the head, obviously trying to kill it, and now it's not going to move anymore. Getting rid of that stuff, didn't like those in it. What part are you going to eat, though? My goodness, that is a very, very good meal. And, and like we've been saying, the insects around here are few. So to catch a nice big one like that, that's a very important meal for this bird. Not only do the lions need to have a big feast, but I think it's rewarding. And there we go, just flying off to the next perch, just behind it. Obviously trying to find a comfortable spot to feed on it. Yes, and the shade is a, is a little bit better. And there we go, a tree with some thorns. So that might help hold it in place as it tries to tear apart, not having to use its, its feet the entire time. And we were just talking about how they are so good at impaling their prey onto thorns and things. Here you go, pulling the wing off, detaching it completely, not wanting to eat that. I can't imagine the wing of an insect would be too delicious and too tasty or have actually much nutrition at all. If it was a small grasshopper, it probably wouldn't have even bothered doing that. It just would have eaten it whole. But because it is large enough, it is able to dismember it this way and just eat on, eat the tasty bits. So that's incredible. Let's see what else it's going to pull off before it eats it. Did you eat that leg? Looked like it ate that leg. Not, not actually in a hurry either. I would think, well, if I was an animal out here, I'd scoff my food down because I'd be so scared that somebody would come and steal it. I'd be like a hyena and devour everything. But isn't this great? See, this is what I still love about safaris, is that you, know, you can go around and we can search for the big cats and things like that, but it's actually really fascinating to sit and watch a magpie shrite as it eats a rather large meal. It's not a sighting that you get to see all the time. And such a clear view of one too. Normally it's quite obstructed. You saw in the beginning when it first captured its prey, how it was hidden amongst the long grass and the bushes and it made it quite difficult for us to see. But it's a very obliging magpie shrike, this one. It looks like it's about to pull its head off. No manners. <laughs> Catherine, you've said that you love these birds' extravagant tails and you think that nature is just marvellous. It is indeed. I quite like this unusual colour pattern that this magpie shrike has got. It's not the traditional sort of black and white colours. And there we go, taking its first bite of this delicious grasshopper and I'm sure well worth it. It's probably been sitting very patiently on that branch for I don't know how many hours waiting for an insect to make a wrong move or a right move for the bird. And look at that, and probably won't need to eat too much after that. I can imagine it'll probably take a bit of a break. Maybe it will just sit and enjoy the sun, give itself a preen after a well-deserved meal. Fantastic. This is what I love to see the rollers catch though. I enjoy watching rollers uh, eat, them, eat their, their prey. They're amazing how they sort of swoop, swoop down and like a spear, grab their prey, almost pushing it down into the ground and then taking back back up to a perch again. This is so cool. Just quickly can listen to the radio while you watch this bird eat. Wendy, you said that you think that this is the best magpie shark sighting you've ever had. That's exciting. That's really good. I'm glad. You know, this is a very special one. This is definitely the best feeding sighting I've ever had uh, of a magpie shrike and its meal. However, we had an amazing sighting when we had the magpie shrike uh, nest that we found just off of Hyena Road. And we got to watch those little chicks. Unfortunately, the little ones didn't make it. But it was still interesting just to see them grow up and mom and dad going back to feed it was quite nice to see. So I enjoyed watching them. And it's a pity they didn't make it to adulthood. But there were definitely a whole lot that made it. But this is really great. It sounds like, if I'm not mistaken, I think Rexon has found Tingana. I'm not sure, but I will get onto the radio once our magpie shrike has finished enjoying its meal. I think it's almost towards the end now. Yes, it's just getting to the abdomen. Well, that's going to be a very good part. I think it's saving the best bit for last. I don't know what a grasshopper tastes like, but I know that there are many people all over the world, and particularly in the more rural countries in Africa, that actually eat and rely heavily on grasshoppers to get all their sustenance. 
Oh, wow. So, Jenny, you've said uh, you're from Indonesia and you said that you actually eat them. That's amazing. That's really good. So, maybe, Jenny, you can tell us, what do they taste like? I don't think that they'd be unpleasant. I'm sure if you fried them up, it would have a, I don't know, maybe a buttery taste. Do, they, do you think they taste anything like an alate wood? <laughs> Megan's giggling now. Megan's directing. Megan, you said that uh, Jenny Animation says that you, you you do fry them up too, and they're very high in protein. I've read that they're very high in protein. Well, if I ever come to Indonesia, I'm going to call you up, Jenny, and I'm going to have to come for a, a little snack in, in the form of grasshopper or a couple of grasshoppers. Perhaps do you have them like maybe pub snacks if you're watching some sport, you know? I think it would be quite nice. We eat mapani worms. That's a very, very big thing out here in South Africa, eating mapani worms. I actually saw a mapani um, moth, um, mapani, tongue tied. I saw a chrysalis. That's what I'm trying to say of a mapani worm. It was really quite cool. I should have actually brought one back for me, completely black, because we don't get to see them. It was quite impressive. Perhaps I shall have to get a photo of one for you. And it's done. It's completed its meal. Actually, it's actually just flown straight back down into some, looks like round leaf teak. Surely it can't be going in to get another meal. That's absolutely ridiculous. You've just eaten something. My goodness. I think it did too. I think it caught some... No, it's hopping around too much. I don't know. It's just gone up here on one of these knob thorns. Wow. Well, that was the longest magpie shrike sighting that I've ever had, that's for sure. Very interesting.